welcome to the way of the spiritual path. On this show, we discuss all the different ways that the spiritual path comes in our lives. This is my wonderful guest today, Flanoy Holmes, and I am Ursula Lentini. Flanoy will be playing sound healing instruments, and I'll be doing pranic healing. So lay down on the floor, on the couch, stand on your head, like do whatever you do to get into your healing position because you can receive today in this show. Uh, I just wanted to get a little background on you. You obviously are the real deal. And I respect you because you, uh, I say, I have a talk called The Way of the Spiritual Path. Um, I think this one is in part two, and it's about elevators, like different levels of consciousness. As we go up the elevator, we receive another level of consciousness. And I say on the really high levels, we become the path. We're not even on the path anymore. We are the path. And I look at you, I listen to your work, and I just say, that dude is the path. How did you land on the path? Well, number one, thanks for allowing me to be here today. And um, I didn't know I was on the path, but sometimes you're so far into the path, you don't, you, you don't you're, realize you're not it. even conscious of the path because it becomes just a way of life. Yeah. So um, the, uh, I think that you're, you receive information when you're ready for it. Yes. You know, the kind of the universe or the, the divine doesn't give it to you until you, you can absorb it and take it in and it can change you. And uh, I think with uh, any kind of higher states of consciousness, there's some kind of Shakti pot or something mm -hmm. that uh, Catapults aware, you. And opens the awareness and, and, and self-awareness is a wonderful thing. So... Um, the I was thinking about this earlier that uh, when I was really young we had a friend of the families her her name was we called her Aunt Hattie she wasn't really an aunt, aunt. But, but she had a um, some kind of universal church up north maybe in uh, Wisconsin or something but she was like uh, Madame Blavatsky she was like uh, she was a medium psychic a healer she was like an amazing person and I was young and she would she would talk to me she'd give me readings she would tell me this stuff for instance oh, a quick story she um, it was Christmas time and family and some friends and stuff I, I don't know how maybe eight or nine and uh, they're taking pictures and someone gives her a camera and she says oh I can't take a picture and I'm confused I said sure Aunt Hattie, just, you just hold this and you press She goes, no, no, I, I can't take a picture. Everybody can take a picture. What do you? She said, come here. She took me in the back room. She said, she held her hand out. She put the camera on her hand. In two seconds, the flash went up. She said, I have so much energy in my body that if I touch a camera, it goes off. I went, okay. <laughs> You're, cool. You're cooler than I thought you were. So that was just one, and so she would come down like every year. But um, and actually, she was kind of a major influence. She gave me these readings, kind of pivotal points in my life that I would, uh, hmm, maybe she's right. I shouldn't do that. But um, uh, that kind of makes you become aware of certain things that mm -hmm. are going on that are kind of outside the norm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I there was always kind of an interest there for me and I think that you know the fact that you have that aunt um, I find on the spiritual path even though it's a lonely road right there's a lot of time alone and a lot of time of self-reflection there's usually people pivotal influences in the beginning somewhere along the way at turning points who really just are there to provide to usher us from one step to the other or to invite us on the journey. I call myself like a GPS system into the subconscious. So when I'm working with my clients, I'm helping them reach their destinies of healing and do release and stuff like that. Right, right. So I'm that, and you're that. You're that person who's catapulting your audience member, or if you're doing a sound healing for somebody, you know, you're the instrument that um, is, is moving people on their path. Right, right. The second thing is like in, in uh, college, um, 
And mm -hmm. another major catalyst was like LSD. So at the time, uh, the substance was like, um, whoa, it was just opening every chakra. And I was having precognitive dreams and prophetic dreams and there were, it, and they were coming of friends and other picking up on all this energy and they were actually happening. Some were real time, some were a few days earlier, but um, I could verify it right there. And they said, how did you know that? I said, well, it came to me in the dream state. Said, so anyway, that was really opening you up and raising your state of consciousness. So these, these things that everyone has the ability, I think, to do if you tune into it, maybe. Um, to a certain extent. So, um, so that was kind of the spark, the, the, the spark and, and that started the, the path and um, becomes a way of life. You're always trying to better yourself and help yourself and help others. And, and it, uh, Those are the staples along the path. Yeah. Self-betterment, self-improvement, right. and helping others. And my father was a musician. Um, my brother, as an older brother, is a professional musician, and so growing up around music, mm -hmm. and you know, music—it's a vibration that makes you feel good. It alters you, and um, just in a social context. Hey, sure, any kind yeah. of music, any form of music brings joy to people, especially yeah. the, if they love that type of music. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you move to music, that's a whole another level, right? For dancing and so on. So you have sound vibration, which, I mean, you can hear a song today that brings up a memory of something wonderful that happened 30 years ago. Yes. Um, it's, a power, it's a powerful thing. So, um, so just to give the viewers and listeners a little background, you are uh, an artist as well. You call yourself a painter, but sometimes people think of the roller. But I call you an artist. Visual artist. Visual right. artist. And you've been um, putting CDs out since 2000. Um, Grammy nominee for your work. Yeah, I've done a lot of album cover work. So, yeah, I've done some Grammy nominations and Grammy finalists and that. But um, then to work a, like, sound healing, I put out a sound healing album in, like, 2000. I had Tibetan monks on it. And um, the, uh, then a yoga CD, uh, maybe 2006. Uh, different musicians. Bhagavan Das was doing some chanting. On it. Nice. And, uh, the um, other albums along the way. But the, the latest incarnation is Flying Mystics. This one right here is their latest album. Flying Mystics. Uh, they're a local band here in Atlanta, but you travel. I'm sure you go on tour. Yeah. And these guys are incredible. Um, being an energy worker and being sensitive to sound, like really, I'm Claire audience, so sound really rocks me. Like when you clip that, um, what's that thing called, that set thing? The slate. The slate. <laughs> I just just about jumped out of my chair uh, because I'm real sensitive to sound. And I think that goes along with my Claire audience. So when I came and listened to you guys play the Flying Mystics, three, three people and tons of instruments, I was transformed. I, I, I don't know. I cannot describe. I had an LSD experience just by listening <laughs> to you guys. I could feel the edge. Let me just describe it. I could feel the edge of my skin, but inside... The, the entire universe started moving. I felt energy shifting, and not just at chakra centers. Like something happened, and the universe was rolling around inside of me. I felt uh, uplifted, like I felt expanded. I, I went out of body, and I was really tall, really high, and my whole... But it, it was the energy inside of me was moving to the music and the rhythms that you guys were playing. And it's not that you play songs. It's just that you're you're moving energy through vibration, and I know um, when people are playing instruments, it's also the musician. It's not just the instrument. So the vibration of the musicians is coming through the instrument, and then when you guys are bringing in divine consciousness and spreading it out to your audience, you know you're right. on you're on purpose. We do. We ch we uh, channel 
music actually and uh, we could do the same song five times in a row it's different every time but um, it's 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 kind of my way of contributing I think it's really doing a positive thing to people we get so much positive response from people that they're having openings it changes and just like you you said I think it, it everyone likes it it's nice music I guess everyone likes it um, Plus, it's rhythmic, so people can move to it. Um, it is instrumental, uh, but um, the the uh, we've had a, several people that with autistic children, and they play the CD, and they said it's the, it's the only thing that will calm them down, yep. and they actually asked for it. The children asked for that music. Yeah, but in this one case, there was, there was a classroom because it put on the flying triscuits. You call it the flying <laughs> triscuit, that calm, calming down music. <laughs> this is funny, but um, it's very important. It's very it, important. The sound healing. If we're talking about the the essence of it's all vibration. So yeah. it's vibration with an intent, and it goes back to what oming. What's om? It's the original sound. It's the creation of the universe. It's the um, the. the in the Rick Vedas, they talk about if you speak it or read it, it's uh, it's just glorifying that uh, creational process, to create creating everything, and then Nada Yoga. You heard the Nada Yoga, and that's dealing. It's a it's an Indian um, system of, of sound healing. They believe that sound is the movement that that, that creates the building blocks of everything mm -hmm. of our DNA of, of our cosmos, cellular structure for sure and then what's interesting is that somatics you know somatics to kind of the wave phenomenon that, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, ISTA the ISTA, sound yeah there, the, sound, there the International Sound Therapy Association but and I just want to give a little plug for them because okay. they're very powerful oh, they're wonderful yeah, yeah. Um, when the medical industry finally comes around and says, uh, okay, all you alternative weirdos, what do you got? You know, because we, we're, we're, we're losing, we're, <laughs> we're losing, and we need some help, so what do you got? And we'll be like, hey, welcome, joining our weird, weird world. ISTA, that's not the conversation, that's my version of the conversation, but ISTA will be the first one to say, oh, we've been waiting for you, and look, <laughs> We have all of this data for you because the medical industry wants data because they're scientists. And uh, the sound therapy has documented their evolution, documented their results, documented the scientific facts of the wave vibration, how it works, why it works, right. and the healing, the obvious, undeniable healing that happens because of sound. The... Um... By the way, we won, we uh, we were awarded the uh, ISTA, the International Sound Therapy, a Sound Healing Award. For the ambassadors, to the yeah, for your contribution. But uh, they have scientists in that realm that uh, they've been studying this stuff as a healing modality, as a diagnostic tool for medicine. That's in the future, but it looks really promising. It's interesting because the vibration they find that like attracts like, so you have different elements that are alike, and the sound vibration brings them together so it's like whoa that's creating life that's mm -hmm. the own molecular mm -hmm. level that's mm -hmm. so it's really interesting mm -hmm. um, so, so today what we're going to do let me put this down here and grab my my tool this is master marilag's healing hand spray i will be doing pranic healing which is energy healing and it's again vibration so understanding that everything is created through energy because of energy energy has its own frequencies and vibrations i will be tapping into universal consciousness and using my body and my education and my skill set to do healing what i'm going to be doing is you the viewer i'm going to be working on you specifically and flournoy is going to be doing sound healing through his various instruments. Now he's not picking a song. He's just going to go through his intuitive state to, you know, what's the next thing to do. He may be doing toning, not using any of the physical instruments, but using his uh, vocal instrument. So whatever is up is up, and that's where we're going to free flow. Right. Um, 
working with sound. Sound healing works on many different levels. If they're really reducing stress, um, it can shift, it can uh, shift energy, it can release, it can uh, unclog blockages, it can redirect energy. So um, it does a number of things. And, and I've been working with the, this for quite a while. So. Um, uh, do you guys set intentions before a concert? Like, this is the. Well, gonna... not necessarily in concert. That's not. If I'm working with individual okay. sound healing, mm -hmm. the concert's different. It's um, reaching more of the masses. But yes, to answer your question. But, um, uh, but it's a little different than when you're, if you're working one on one with someone and mm -hmm. trying to help them with a disease or uh, mm -hmm. get through some kind of a trauma. Mm -hmm. or, but um, I like working with the bowls, like Tibetan bowls, which I picked this up in Tibet. Um, you know, you work with sound vibration, and the vibration seeks its, it, it, it has this uh, intuitive intelligence. It kind of knows where to go. Mm -hmm. you know, so if there's a block, it'll hit up the block. You don't have to direct it. No. Smarter than you yes. are. So. Yeah, it's the universal consciousness coming through. Exactly. So. Yeah. So here we go, sit back, relax, lay down, and uh, I'll be spraying every once in a while so you'll hear that sound. Okay, here we go.
doing good <laughs> <laughs> really really good um it's very interesting um so in the pranic killing chakra system they 
the back solar plexus is where we store emotional history and that's right so i'm working on one person but there's one 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 watching listening so collectively our back solar plexus loaded right because we carry baggage but when i was working on that that's when you brought those uh shaker the rattle the Chikapa. Yeah, that. <laughs> it's a shamanic, uh, the, the shamans use that in, in South America. It's a powerful tool. It was working because I started doing that and then you pulled that out and then the junk like was flowing out of the chakra. And I'm like, yeah, bring it on, bring it on. So it was just starting to just kind of flood right on, right on out. So it was interesting to be able to experience it with that happening at the same time and then when I was working on the throat chakra the uh, wind instrument came out so it's just it's just very interesting how everything you know keeps vibing together yeah yeah it's um I mean we were kind of doing abbreviated yes thing, but um yeah the different sounds and instruments that they create the vibration work in different levels in different places mm -hmm. and um Right. This was awesome. Well, I'm, I, it was fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the work you do in the world. Thank you for your personal practice, whatever that looks like, for you to become who you are, so you can do this for us, for all you know, for all the people who are gravitating to you and what you do and who you are and why you are and. Well, I appreciate that. I just try to, um, you know, not hurt myself and others <laughs> every day. That's the medical and, uh, term, do no harm. <laughs> exactly. The first rule, do no harm. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's so. compassion, actually. And, you know, on the other side of that coin, do no harm is actually have loving compassion. Compassion. It's a big word. Yeah. We have one of our songs. It's one of my favorite songs, but it's called Compassion. Of course. So compassion is important. It is important. I would, on the top, maybe five things on the spiritual path, would you say compassion would be up, up there? Compassion. Is hard. A lot of these things, you hear these words, but it's hard to like implement them into your daily life. Mm -hmm. You really understand, because they all have different levels. Mm -hmm. Just like the different instruments and the mm -hmm. different chakras. Mm -hmm. There's different frequencies, the different... And we're only human. My... Uh, and also, I think it's important to be good to yourself. You know, you're the only self you have, so you might as well be good to yourself. Yeah. So. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please thank let you. us know about your healing benefits. Um, really excited to be able to offer this and to share this experience with you. Thank you.